Hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? It is Thursday. For a second there, I'd forgotten what day it was. It's Thursday, tomorrow's Friday, and this week is flying by. Seems like yesterday was Monday. Anyway, I hope you had an awesome day today. I did have kind of an awesome day today. It was good enough. And tonight, I want to talk to you about uh, faithful. Past, present, future, and forever. And so that's God. God is faithful. God is so faithful. And He will always be faithful. I have this weird shadow in my office. Maybe because my computer was too far away. I don't know. I made me some coffee. I had to have some coffee. It's kind of weak, but it's decaf. And I just needed a little pick-me-up. And decaf does that for me. It gives me just a little bit of a pick-me-up. Okay, well, let's jump into some prayer, and then we will get into some scripture. And... Uh, going to be some good learning tonight about the faithfulness of God. God, we just praise you and thank you because you are faithful, God. There is nothing you don't know about us. You know everything about us, God. There is nothing that you don't see. There is nothing hidden from you, God. You are sovereign over all things. You are on your throne and you are in control. You are the great Jehovah. You are the great I am. God, we just thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector, for being our shelter in the storm, for being our strength and our refuge, God. God, you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness. You are magnificent and powerful and mighty, but God, you are loving and kind and compassionate. You are faithful, God. You are trustworthy. You want none to perish. You are patient. Thank you for loving us, God. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we just cry out for the lost. We just pray that they would open their eyes, that their eyes and their ears would be open to truth, God, and that their hearts would be open. God, that the Holy Spirit would draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home, God. We just pray for them to see where they are and to return to you, to repent, for you to reconcile the relationship that you once had with them. God, we pray for all the disasters. We just pray that you would be with these people and that you would meet their needs, that you would send people that would be the hands and feet of Jesus, the loving compassion of Jesus, God, that they would know that you are near, God. And we pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength. I have some friends that are sick, God. I just pray for healing for them. And God, we just pray. We pray for truth to continue to surface over all the many lies that have been told starting last year and this year too, God. Just let truth reign. God, let your truth reign. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Well, I'm going to read to you what I uh, shared today. I found this song on YouTube. I didn't wake up singing it this morning. I was just looking for something that would express what I want to share. And so I found this song. It's called Faithful Now. And uh, the song and message is so powerful and just what I needed to express today. I love these lyrics by Vertical Worship. You were faithful then, you'll be faithful now. That's part of the chorus talks about moving mountains and giants falling and all the all the things that God did in the past 
So God never changes. He is the same God of the past, present, future, and forever. He is faithful. He is faithful. He has been faithful in your past. He is faithful today in your present. He will be faithful in your future. And he will be faithful forever, personally in your life. But as far as the Bible goes, he has been faithful in the past. He is faithful now in the future. I mean in the present. He is going to be faithful in the future. And he is going to be faithful forever. For all of his children. All over the world. People that we don't even know that we will meet in heaven. We can depend on he never changes and is constant in all things in our lives. We can depend on the faithfulness of God. It will not end. Someday we will see just how faithful he has been to us. Some of the protection that we did not understand will be revealed to us. What a glorious day that will be. Or maybe everything here is just not going to matter in comparison to our experience in our forever home. Heaven is my forever home. Is Jesus your Savior today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. Okay, so that is what I shared today. Now I want to share some scripture and I want to share with you what my daily reading was. My daily reading today was about faith in Hebrews 11. Um, in you version, that's what my scripture was. It was one of these scriptures, but I always just read the whole chapter. So it says examples of faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are not seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. By faith... Oh... But without faith, it is impossible to please him, to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, in being heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should, after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of the promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. God is faithful. He promised her that child. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. 
and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob, when he was a dying blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents before they saw he was a proper child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the repro reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians, assaying to do, were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell, fell down, after they were compassed about seven days. By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not, when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I more say? For the time would, be fall, would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword out of weakness, were made strong, waxed valiant in, valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens, women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. So all of these that died in the Old Testament, this is all a lot of the Old Testament fathers that, um, let's see who wrote this, I'm not sure, that Paul, no, it's not Paul, it is a mystery. Traditionally, Paul has been credited with writing this book. I don't know, they don't know who wrote it, maybe Paul. Anyway, so he's talking about all these people that had great faith, but on the flip side of that, they had great faith, 
But look at the faithfulness of God, too, in these stories. That when God called Abraham out, you know, God had a plan. God had a place for Abraham to go. He was faithful to give him what he promised. Um, so God is faithful. These men and women of faith had met a faithful God had met a God that actually did what he said he would do. That all these things, even in the testings, some of these were tested. Even in the testings, God was faithful. Okay, well let's go back to Deuteronomy 7.9. I don't even remember what this was about, but it looked good. It looked good, and I go, yeah, that will work. Deuteronomy 7, 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him, and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. So... God is the faithful God and he keeps his covenants in mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. He is a faithful God. All right, what do I want to read now? Let's go to Lamentations. And I had a hard time finding this last time. Maybe I can find it easier this time. Don't bet on it though. My problem is, which side of songs is it on? I found it on this side. If not, I may have to look it up. Uh oh. I'm losing things out of my Bible. I'm a Bible stuffer. I stuff things in my Bible. I can't believe I can't remember where this is. That's annoying. gets back in the other direction. Yeah, it's gotta be. I think maybe it is right here. Sorry. Sorry that I just can't put my finger on it. <laughs> That'd be great. Okay, I know it's not there. Well, I'm just gonna look in the front. Oh, it's after Jeremiah. I was right. It is on this side. It just seems like it should be, I don't know, after Kings or something. But I guess it's where it's always been. Lamentations 3, 22 through 33. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. He sitteth alone and keepeth silence, because he hath borne it upon him. Okay. So great is the faithfulness of God. Let's read Isaiah 28. 
2511, which is back in the other direction. Twenty-five, eleven, And he shall spread forth his hands in the midst of them as he that swimmeth spread forth his hands to swim. And he shall bring down their pride. All right, that's not it. Sorry. O Lord, thou art my God, I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels are of old. Our faithfulness, thy, count, thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. For thou hast made of a city and heap of a defensed city a ruin, a palace of strangers, to be no city. It shall never be built. Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee. The city of the terrible nations shall fear thee. Okay. So again, God is faithful. It is hot in here for some reason. Okay. Let's go to First Corinthians one nine. So all of these in the Old Testament, like way past, way past. So this is more present. This is not as far past. First Corinthians 1, 9. One nine. God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. So God called us into this fellowship with Jesus. And God is faithful. God is faithful. He is faithful. Right, let's read First Thessalonians. Five twenty four. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. I'm going to skip up to twenty three. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. That's 1 Thessalonians uh, 5.24. So 2 Thessalonians 3.3. 3 says, But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil, and that we may be delivered from the unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. So God wants to keep us from evil. So now let's move to, oh, I need to read that one, Hebrews 10.23. Hebrews 10.23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. So let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Now these guys in Hebrews 11, they didn't waver. They never did argue with God. I know there were some crazy things going on out there like Noah and Abraham. You know, God said, leave your, leave your home and go to this land, this promised land. And uh, Moses, 
Moses had faith. All those guys had faith. So let's read Revelation 19.11. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and that is Jesus. So this is our future. This is our future, and this is our forever. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. And so this is when Jesus comes back to the earth. The rapture's already done. That was done. This is when Jesus comes back to the earth to defeat all evil. And there will still be evil on this earth. He's going to come back and he's going to defeat all evil. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. That was the end of 1911. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. The, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a two goeth a sharp sword and that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of almighty God that he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written king of kings and lord of lords and I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great and I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army and the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image these both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. So this, this will be the end of evil. And this end of evil will be brought by Jesus. Jesus will come. Jesus is faithful. Jesus is faithful to end the evil. Jesus is faithful. Jesus is going to be faithful to us in the future. Tomorrow, he's faithful tomorrow. He's faithful forever. God is faithful, past, present, future, tomorrow, forever. Well, future, a future can be a few hours ahead of what I'm doing right now. We don't know. We don't know what is to come. Only God does. But God is faithful. So we have to, we must trust him in all things above all things we must trust him because he is faithful he's proved it we read it in the scriptures he's faithful we need to have faith and trust him all right how do we want to do this maybe this faith i like this little thing 
faith visit outline. It's kind of short, but it's really good. Okay, let me get a drink of coffee here. Mm. It's getting cold. There's nothing worse than cold wheat coffee. Although I do like iced coffee during the summer. Okay, faith outline. Faith visit outline. So key question, is your personal, in your personal opinion, what do you understand it takes for a person to go to heaven? I'd like to share with you how the Bible answers this question. If it is all right. There is a word that can be used to answer this question. F-A-I-T-H. Faith. F is for forgiveness. We cannot have eternal life in heaven without God's forgiveness. In Him, meaning Jesus, we have redemption through His blood. The forgiveness of sins. Ephesians 1, 7 a a is for available. Forgiveness is available for all. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 But not automatic. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 7 21 I is for impossible it is impossible for God to allow sin into heaven God is love John 3 16 just for judgment is without mercy James 2 13 a man is sinful for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God Romans 3 23 but how can a sinful person enter heaven when God allows no sin T turn T is for turn. Question, if you were driving down the road and someone asked you to turn, what would he or she be asking you to do? Change direction. Turn means repent. Turn from something, sin and self. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Luke 13, 3b. Turn to someone. Turn, trust Christ only. The Bible tells us Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he arose again the third day according to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, 3b uh, and 4. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. Um, H. H is for heaven. Heaven is eternal life. Here. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. John 10.10b 10, 10, Hereafter, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive to you myself that where I am, there you may be also. John 14, 3. How? How can a person have God's forgiveness, heaven, and eternal life, and Jesus as personal Savior and Lord? Explain based on a leaflet picture. Forsaking all, I trust him. In Romans 10, 9. Understanding what we have shared would you like to receive this forgiveness by trusting in Christ as your personal Savior and Lord? Okay, well, let me find a prayer that we will add because that one does not have a prayer. I read this one the other night. I 
thought it was a pretty nice little short one. All right, repeat this after me if you would like to receive Jesus as your Savior right now. Dear God, I know that Jesus is your Son and that he died on the cross and was raised from the dead. I know I have sinned and need forgiveness. I am willing to turn from my sins and receive Jesus as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so if you said that prayer tonight and you accepted Jesus as your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. And the angels in heaven are rejoicing, and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now, in order to grow closer in a relationship with God, it's very important that you read His Word. And I would start in Matthew. I would start reading in Matthew. Then you'll learn more about Jesus. And it's very important that we pray every day, that we pray to God. It's very important that we praise also. And it's very important that we share with others our decision and uh, find a church that believes in a believer's baptism and get baptized like Jesus did. Okay, well, it is time for me to get off of here. Even though I, I drank some coffee, I'm kind of sleepy. I'm going to finish my coffee, though, and go finish my night. So in Numbers 6, 24 through 26, it says, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance and give thee peace. That is a blessing from God. And I want to bless you and your family with that abundantly. So I am going to pray real quick. I'm going to thank God for his faithfulness. God, we just thank you for your faithfulness, God. Just all throughout the Bible, in the past, in the present, in the future and forever, God, you are faithful. You will always be faithful. Thank you for sending us Jesus to save us, to offer us eternal life so that we can live with you in our forever home, God, that we can only imagine what it looks like. We have no idea. God, we just pray that you would give us the boldness that we will share your truth and that we will share um, the gospel of Jesus with others. God, we just pray for, I pray for all my friends and their families, God, that you would bless them, protect them, and provide for them, God. Just anybody that comes here, God, just, just let them feel your presence. And God, I just thank you for all the many, many things that you've done in my life personally. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Well, my pray and share warriors, I uh, would like for you to have an awesome rest of your night and awesome tomorrow, which is Friday. So much love. Much love. And cyber hugs. Till I see you again. Good night.